10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Welcome to part 2 of our video covering the build of the new 1100 scale Saturn V kit from Estes. In this step, we'll be assembling the motor mount and installing it within the main airframe tube. We will also be priming the main airframe tube. For this step, we'll need our main airframe tube, our 29 millimeter motor mount tube, the centering ring set, and the shorter of the two accessory tubes provided in the kit. The shorter tube will be inserted into the aft end of the airframe once we've completed assembly and will become a stiffening ring, a reinforcement. Although it's called out in the directions, we will not be installing the motor mount retaining ring yet. We're going to save that for later in the build. We'll start by cutting the centering rings free of the backing sheet. I'm using a standard number 11 X-Acto blade here. Next, let's mark the locations that the centering rings will be installed on our motor mount tube. One of the first things I'm going to do is designate this as the fore end, the front, of our motor mount tube. The first mark is placed one eighth of an inch, that's about three millimeters, from the forward end of the tube. The next mark will be eight and one eighth inches from the forward end. That is about 206 millimeters. And then the third mark will be placed at the aft end of the tube. I'm going to place the threaded mount for the retaining ring on the aft end and use that as a guide for marking that particular location. I like to extend these marks all the way around the tube and a great way to do that quickly and accurately is to put a centering ring. This is a 29 millimeter to 38 millimeter centering ring in place and then extend that mark all the way around the tube. Slide it down to the next location and the aft location. Let's talk about glue. Now the directions recommend that you use a carpenter's wood glue for this step and that's great. It it'll, will work fine, uh, your rocket will be plenty strong and it will look fantastic. Let's talk about how wood glues work though. This is a aliphatic resin glue. It has a lot of moisture in it. When it cures, that moisture comes out of the glue and leaves behind a structure that connects the parts. Unfortunately, when it cures, it also changes size and shape. And that can leave a, a dimple, if you will, on the exterior of your model. Instead, we're going to use five minute epoxy to install the centering rings onto the motor mount tube and then install that assembly within the airframe tube. That's because epoxy is a dimensionally stable adhesive. It won't change size or shape as it cures, leaving a telltale dimple on the outside of your rocket. Before we glue the rings in place, we need to check the fit onto the tube and it is a little tight. There's an easy way to fix that. Here is a whiz-bang little centering ring reamer that John Boren at Estes made for me. It looks like he uh, printed it on a 3D printer and then just attached some coarse sandpaper to the outside. You simply stick that in there and give it a few twists. And voila, it fits wonderfully. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer or a fancy tool, you can use a wine cork with a piece of sandpaper wrapped around it. It'll work just as well. Here's our second ring. Just a few passes on the interior. 
and then we can check the fit. Works great. We'll mix up some epoxy. I like to use index cards for this step. I can throw them away just after I do it. Mix that up with a tongue depressor or a popsicle stick. You can even use that to install the glue on the line we created. We're doing the middle ring first. And we'll let that cure for about five minutes before we place the other rings. There's one more thing we can do. Since we want that to be a cosmetically clean joint, I've put a glove on and I'm going to dip my finger in some common rubbing alcohol and then smooth that epoxy out to ensure a nice, clean, strong joint. We can do that on both sides of the ring. Now that ring will be hidden when we finish the model, but you and I will both know it's there. The epoxy on our center ring has cured, so we can now install the forward ring. We'll let this cure and then install the aft ring. Now one thing we want to do here is we want to keep adhesive away from the back side of this ring. In other words, the outer aft portion of the ring. And that's because later we are going to install the retaining ring mount. We do, however, want this to be snugged up against that position. What we're going to do is draw this back a bit, apply the adhesive, put it into place, and then use this to refine the positioning just a bit. We'll then take it off and save it for later. We'll check that fit one more time. And we'll let this cure. I've installed a post-it note on the forward end of the main airframe tube so we can understand which is the front end. Forward, forward. When we install the motor mount tube, the aftmost centering ring will be 3 and 3 8 inches forward of the aft end of the airframe tube. That means that our forward centering ring will be at roughly this position inside the airframe tube. So what we want to do is apply epoxy roughly here inside the main airframe tube. That is about eight inches aft of the forward end of the tube. Now here's a question. How can we make sure that this centering ring is the appropriate distance from the aft end of the airframe tube? That's three and three-eighths inches. Well, one way we can do that is to make a tool to help us. This is, a, uh, this is just a standard cooking skewer. It's pointy on one end and it won't be the last time you see it in this project. What I've done is put a wrap of tape at the 3 and 3 8 inch point. With our glue inside the tube, we'll put the motor mount in place, and when this green tape is up against the aft edge of the tube, we'll know we're in the right position. To install our epoxy, we're going to use what's called a flux brush. This is a cheap inexpensive disposable brush designed for one-time use. I have no idea what they're used for in the real world. I'll have to Google that. What we're going to do is mix up a fair amount of epoxy, get it on our brush, and then apply it roughly a foot inside our main airframe tube. That way the epoxy will be dragged forward as we position the motor mount tube in the appropriate place inside the airframe tube. We're going to just use our tool to make sure that we've got the spacing right here at the aft end of our model. And we do. 
All of the epoxy connecting our motor mount to our airframe tube is cured, and now it's time to put this reinforcing ring in place. Again, this is the shorter of the two accessory tubes included with the kit. The reinforcement tube is in place, and I've mixed up some epoxy. I'm going to place the epoxy, just a little bit of it, ahead of the location inside the tube. You don't want to use the aliphatic resin for this step. It sets up far too quickly to do this. With epoxy, we get a bit of working time. I'm going to slide that forward. Now, how will I know when I'm at three quarters inches? I've made another one of my skewer tools. Perfect, we'll let this cure and then we'll be ready to prime the tube. Let's talk about primers because we'll be using a couple of different types on this project. The first we'll be using is a high solids filler primer and we'll be spraying that onto the exposed paper tubes. The reason we do that is we want to fill the spiral grooves that are an artifact of the tube manufacturing process. The other primer we'll be using is a low solids primer that's intended to be a base for the painted surfaces. Both of the primers serve different purposes and they'll be used at the appropriate points. In addition to the main airframe tube, we'll also be priming three other tubes. The first will be the third stage tube. I've masked off about an inch and a half of the aft end of this that will integrate with the adapter section in a later step. This is the short stubby service module tube. And finally, you'll find this tiny tube in the bag containing the plastic parts for the command module and launch escape system. This represents the launch escape system motor. We're now in my paint booth, which looks suspiciously like my wife's horse trailer. Seriously, it's relatively dust free and it gets us out of the wind. We'll apply the primer in long strokes, starting and finishing off of the model. Multiple light coats are the goal here. While we eventually want to have a healthy buildup of the high solids primer, we don't want to hit the surface of the parts with too much at once. Four coats of primer will go onto the parts to start with, allowing about seven to 10 minutes between each coat. Note that the parts have been attached to simple handling sticks to make the process cleaner and easier. Our primer has cured for about 48 hours and it's time to start sanding. Cure time varies quite a bit, usually driven by humidity. When the humidity is high, it takes a little bit longer. When the humidity is low, it can be ready to sand in as little as 24 hours. We're going to be using 400 grit sandpaper for this initial pass. Now, full disclosure, this process makes a mess. I'm going to do just a little bit of it here on camera inside, and then I'm going to take everything outside to finish up. What we want to do is just change the color of the primer. Notice how it's lightened up considerably there. We'll continue that on the rest of the tube. We'll also need to sand the service module tube, the launch escape system tube, and our third stage tube. Again, note how the color changes. We've sanded all of our tubes through thousand grit sandpaper, so our first prime and sand cycle is done. We're off to a good start, but to completely banish these spiral marks, we'll need to do at least two more cycles. The process will be identical to what we just did though, so there's no need to do that on camera. So that brings us to the end of this installment of our Saturn V build series. In our next video, we'll be building the transition section that connects the second and third stages. Thanks for watching.